Ireland needs to go back in the ages and start all over again. The roots of conflict in the north of Ireland go back centuries to a time and place where, oddly enough, one's own roots are found. The Macdon Levy family probably lived in, well, this part of the county because the kind of headquarters of the Don MacLevy clan was in Downpatrick, which is only half a dozen miles from where we're standing here at the foot of the Mourne Mountains. Genealogy reveals that the story of conflict here leads back to early Celtic times when, despite the singularity of religion, farmers still had to watch not only their backs, but their cattle as well. The cattle, or the surrounding wall, would have been built as a protection against raiders because it was quite common in those days for one farmer to raid the other. He probably stored his grain crops in the souterrain that was down behind me here. Uh, the family could kind of come in here at night, get themselves down in the shelter, and they were reasonably protected from raiders who would come. Well, there were always dangerous times in Ireland to live in. It was just a kind of a custom, really, that they fought with each other. I mean, the thing's still going on, isn't it? But across this lock, back in the Republic, no battle reigns because, but for a dwindling few, most are devout Catholics, where regardless of the weather, they climb towards the sky. It is the annual pilgrimage to Crow Patrick, where you will find no atheist or agnostic but the lovers of God, of tradition, of Irish history, of family outings. Arriving at dawn, they ascend the mountain, hurting in their footsteps on the way, up towards and closer to the Almighty, who, as the Irish know, speaks with a brogue in his hideaway beyond the sky. All ages and at all sizes they come. This is a culture, that of religion which has coloured the Irish and made their souls able to suffer pain. And now, as the outside world's pagan and vulgar influences come, this Catholic culture may be one of the few presences this island needs more than most. That's just, uh, it's a challenge. And uh, by the time you, you, you come down here, there's no difference between the rich man, the poor man, or the wise man, or the, you know, whatever. Everybody's the same up there. Well, it's more of a penance for me to carry him. It's tough, it's tough uh, and for an adult, but it's tougher with a child when you're back. But this event is, a, is very much a special Irish event. Their parents did it, their grandparents did it. Uh, it is part of their roots uh, and it's, uh, it's like uh, any type of a custom. They feel that they must pass it on to their children. St. Patrick looks on with admiration, but has nothing to say. But they need no encouragement. They press on for their own reasons. that make up the character of Ireland, 
strong and defiant when they need to be, bred from centuries of hardship and all different, descending from Celts, Normans, Anglo-Saxons and all the tribes of Europe. take you home to one of these stations where so many of this race stood in tears as they departed this land. All east-west tracks pass ultimately through Mullingar, this one from Galway and that one from Sligo, here to this Midland conurbation which I call home. these fields and their walls crafted of Irish stone for centuries just as they had been by my ancestors who kept their enemies away as I now try to keep my cattle in and some peace alive in one's soul. In fields such as these, I began a romance of a sort with this ancient island that would endure for many years. This fair-skinned nation, raging alive, kicking asunder its ancient chains. This land where time cannot fly, a nation from which so many fled now crawling with its human race. Yet there is more to tell, out here nestled in these midland hills, the air scented green, ancient friends awake out of their deaths to shake a hand. Walk together across the meadow, keep your voice down, the grass has ears, to hear your secrets said, beyond these eastern rainbows where the brooding heavens carry their veil of rain to hide all her sins and keep her safe in her graces. Thank you. 
it is part of their roots uh, and it's, uh, it's like uh, any type of a custom. They feel that they must pass it on to their children. St. Patrick looks on with admiration but has nothing to say. But they need no encouragement. They press on for their own reasons. that make up the character of Ireland. Strong and defiant when they need to be, bred from centuries of hardship, and all different, descending from Celts, Normans, Anglo-Saxons, and all the tribes of Europe. take you home to one of these stations where so many of this race stood in tears as they departed this land. All east-west tracks pass ultimately through Mullingar, this one from Galway and that one from Sligo, here to this Midland conurbation which I call home. these fields and their walls crafted of our take you home to one of these stations where so many of this race stood in tears as they departed this land. All east-west tracks pass ultimately through Mullingar, this one from Galway and that one from Sligo, here to this Midland conurbation which I call home. these fields and their walls crafted of Irish stone for centuries just as they had been by my ancestors who kept their enemies away as I now try to keep my cattle in and some peace alive in one's soul.
In fields such as these I began a romance of a sort with this ancient island that would endure for many years. This fair-skinned nation, raging alive, kicking asunder its ancient chains. This land where time cannot fly, a nation from which so many fled, now crawling with its human race. Yet there is more to tell, out here nestled in these midland hills, the air scented green, ancient friend and defiant when they need to be, bred from centuries of hardship, and all different, descending from Celts, Normans, Anglo-Saxons, and all the tribes of Europe. take you home to one of these stations where so many of this race stood in tears as they departed this land. All east-west tracks pass ultimately through Mullingar, this one from Galway and that one from Sligo, here to this Midland conurbation which I call home. these fields and their walls crafted of Irish stone for centuries just as they had been by my ancestors who kept their enemies away as I now try to keep my cattle in and some peace alive in one soul. In fields such as these I began a romance of a sort with this ancient island that would endure for many years. This fair-skinned nation raging alive, kicking asunder its ancient chains. This land where time cannot fly,